Yeah. I think two speakers uh, uh, before me has already pointed out the, the two important uh, uh, problems in the Asia's regional economic cooperation. First is the reality. We now face the over institutionalized region cooperation mechanism instead of the you know, underdeveloped institutionalization. Another uh, factor is about the, they are full of the skeptical uh, discussion about the future uh, re regional economic you know, cooperation. We are not so much confident about the future. Uh, FTAAP is a long way. But at the same time, I, I, I not agree with the professor, you know, ideas on the ISIP and the TPP is some kind of the competition and it's also a competition between the China and the US. I think sooner or later, uh, it will be emerged in the future. Now, there are some members that over, overlap to each other and also they have their own advantage and disadvantage. So my presentation is uh, mainly focused on the infrastructures, connectivities, and uh, Asia-Pacific regional economic cooperation. I would like to focus on the two, uh, two points. First, it, uh, uh, infrastructure connectivities is a physical basis for Asia-Pacific regional economic cooperation. Second is China's effort to promote infrastructure connectivities in Asia-Pacific region. And finally, give my personal suggestion or conclusion. As we know that now in the Asia-Pacific region, we are, have the two uh, infrastructure building or connectivity. First is soft side. Soft side, we have already talked uh, a lot on the regulations and the market connectivities. I mean that now the recently the, one of the hot topics about the TPP and RCEP. Actually, during the past decades, we also focus on talking about uh, the FTAAP and APEC, also the 10 plus 3, 10 plus 1, and 10 plus 6. Um, but on the other hand, I think in the Asia Pacific regions, we face the underdeveloped you know, infrastructure connectivity. I mean that the transport, energy, power, water, such kind of the infrastructure connectivity. Although World Bank and the ADB uh, did a lot of you know, contributions on, the, on this sector, but they are still fa face a lot of you know, finance gaps and the capacity gaps. Uh, on the development infrastructures connected in Asia Pacific regions, I think so many research reports have already shown us now the conditions. Here I just uh, cite the research from the McKinsey's in the 2011. It's pointed out as, I think is, uh, 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 um, everyone here knows the, for example, the India is short of the electricity or powers. And the Indonesia are the, also the Thailand, such kind of the Southeast Asia countries, we face the short of the transport, uh, railways, such kind of, you know, infrastructure. And such kind of the underdevelopment infrastructure buildings has already impeded the economic growth, typically on the background of the financial crisis, because the limit of the budget, you know, deficit, and also the so many, you know, political considerations. So the infrastructure building, due to its uh, long time uh, project planning and implementations, so it's always the face the difficulties to enhance the. the infrastructure building. Here is uh, ADB's annual report on the two, uh, 2013. We show that ADB has already put more than half of its fund or uh, its financial resources input into the regional infrastructure building. But there's still less uh, money. Uh, the McKinsey analysis shows that uh, there's still around eight trillions, you know, uh, in the infrastructure buildings. And uh, this report talked a lot about the PPP you know, models and the opportunities for the private sector. And uh, another you know, uh, important to calculate on the gap of the fund in the infrastructure buildings, typically from the World Bank and the Asia Development Bank, they gave the similar uh, estimate. And now the reality is in the Asia Pacific region is that some countries, they have enough money to support their domestic transport building, for example, China.
but at the same time, they are still have so many um, regional countries. They are faced, uh, you know, uh, a huge, you know, fund gap to support their transport building. For example, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam. So this problem is even serious for the regions. Uh, as we know that APEC has already, uh, you know, contributes a lot on the regional, also make efforts to pushing the regional infrastructure connectivity. It's already setting the target in the long run, as we know that the BOGO goals, uh, by the 2020, we should establish a free and open trade and investment, you know, regions. And APEC leaders reconfirmed in the 2013 that so the physical institution and the people-to-people -people connectivities are the critical, uh, you know, uh, foundations for the uh, BOGO goals and also regional integration. And we also uh, put forward uh, joint action plans. We, in the last year's APEC summit, we have already put forward the APEC framework on connectivities and also the multi-year plans on infrastructure development and investment. Now the APEC China this year, is also put the infrastructure buildings as a key, uh, you know, topic for the China's, you know, summit. And as we know that the second senior's officials meetings in the Qingdao during last week uh, is typically uh, talking about the public-private partnership framework, how to attract more private comp sectors to involve in the infrastructure building and the regional connectivities. And China's efforts on this topic is, uh, I would like to uh, firstly to talk about, you know, China's position on regional infrastructure building. Firstly, we are fundamentally support the, WT, uh, the, uh, the World Bank and the ADB to play the leading role. There are no competition between these two powers, between China or US, you know, in this region. China wouldn't like to be a leader. So uh, competitors, you know, with any regional partners. Secondly, we would like to cooperation with regional co countries, typically infrastructure building. Transnational, you know, uh, work is rather dependent on the cooperation between the, you know, regional members. And finally, we also establishing a specialized bank, as we know that the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank. Uh, this bank is natural, is an uh, intergovernment, multi-development, you know, in bank. It's similar to the Europe uh, Investment Bank. The total scale is about uh, 15 billion, but could be increased in the futures. Now the members, as the latest news is about the 16, but we have already faced so many, you know, criticism from the Japan and even India since that they have been exposed. I think this is not true. The, the AIIB is uh, firstly open to the regional members, and uh, finally, I think in the long run, it should be open to the uh, global, you know, any country would like to join, I, I think it's, it's be open to them. Now the progress has shown that in this year's, in, in, in we have already held the, you know, multilateral consultation and a working group has already set up the full establishment of the AIB. I guess at the end of this year, uh, everything will uh, be open, the details about this bank. Um, I, I think the key problem for AIB finance, uh, uh, is uh, its finance model, I mean the PPP. Now the uh, Chinese government has already established the national PPP center uh, and start to set up the management institution of PPP in China under the framework of the APEC. Now we have already established a PPP pilot project in Harbin and Luoyang, but recently it's already expanded to the nearly to 60 you know, cities in, in China. It it's has, uh, has already uh, acted as a way to solve or to deal with now the China's uh, very serious domestic problem is the local government debt problems. So in the long run, PPP models is also, is not only benefit for the China's domestic urbanization you know, uh, issues, it also can be used in the regional uh, infrastructure buildings. Now the some uh, many training programs has already happened in the PPP under the Ministry of the Finance. 
um, beside the, the, the Asia investment uh, infrastructures, you know, uh, banks, they are all, China has already established the special fund in the 2010, I mean that China ICN Investment Cooperation Fund. And uh, this is a fund has already uh, do some project in Cambodia, Laos, uh, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Uh, so my conclusions and suggestions include uh, four points for, for, for here to discuss. Uh, first is uh, I think the risk control mechanism is the key point of the PPP. As we know that the uh, infrastructure building is always a long you know, time consuming and uh, it's always uh, full of the so many uncertainties not only economic but also the political for China side I think our legal system and also uh, some protect me mechanism it still need to be enhanced and second I think that we should focus on the infrastructure sustainability is also supported by the ADB we when we uh, planning some infrastructure uh, um, projects we should uh, have a fully consideration about is uh, environment friendly and technique transfer and the training the people typically is benefit for the long run maintenance of the infrastructure. Third is the uh, division of labor. We should have a good coordinate with uh, ADB and also in the this year, another very important you know, development bank is BRICS Bank. It's also focused on the infrastructure building. How to, I think, uh, clarify the different you know, function. This is very important. And finally, effective governance. I think that the EIB also other measures uh, adopted in the Asia Pacific region supports the uh, infrastructure building. It should be linked to the uh, global uh, governors, I, I mean that maybe we should emphasize that the G20 and the APEC, their coordination and uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, and we also talk, think about how to put the infrastructure building as a measure of implementation of the post-2015. It is also a very important consideration because now the aid for trade is the key uh, topic of the WTO and also the post-2015. I think the infrastructure building is also can be a very concrete measures of implementation as a post-2015. Uh, it should be give, I think, enough uh, attention. So I stop here. Thank you.